This is a day of spirituality and spectacle in Rome, the inauguration of Pope Francis, a celebration of faith for the world's more than one billion Catholics, a new era for the Roman Catholic Church, and the culmination of weeks of watching history in the making. First, let us show you how this extraordinary day began with Francis entering St. Peter's Square. Hundreds of thousands of pilgrims fill the square. As many as a million people, in fact, have traveled to Rome. Religious leaders, royalty, heads of state there as well, representing 130 countries. For Canada, Governor General David Johnston. The inauguration began inside St. Peter's Basilica. We have many amazing images to show you right here. First look, rare look at one of Catholicism's holiest places, Francis praying before the tomb of St. Peter. Here is Francis later receiving the symbols of his papacy, the pallium, the wool cloak that represents his role as shepherd of the world's 1.2 billion Roman Catholics. And the fisherman's ring made of silver, gold plated, simpler than past rings. In keeping with the focus of his papacy, it bears the image of St. Peter with the keys. Now we want to show you images from inside St. Peter's Basilica. We know that there are more than 130 official delegations who are in attendance for this inauguration. Uh, 33 delegations from various Christian churches as well, Jewish delegations, other delegations from Muslim, Buddhist faith. Uh, but as far as delegations from world leaders, there are kings, there are a number of monarchs as well, heads of state, heads of government. Vice President Joe Biden, in fact, head of state, that is Governor General David, uh, David Johnston, 31 heads of state, six reigning sovereigns. And what you're seeing now is they are meeting them one by one. Uh, a moment, personal exchange between Pope Francis and the official representatives. And we've seen as this has continued for some 20 minutes or so, very friendly, very often humorous, pat on the back kind of greetings, uh, very, very personable in these moments of connection. So the live images will continue, as does our special coverage. We have Susan Ormiston with us this morning, and she has been part of our news team in Vatican City for weeks now. We're going to have to get you Italian citizenship, I think, Susan. You've been there for such a long time, doing such an amazing job. Uh, but let's speak with, speaking of amazing, the scene in St. Peter's as you saw it. Well, first off, the weather, it was beautiful, as it was the day that Benedict left this place. It's been rainy and cool, but today, sunny, and people poured into St. Peter's, as you've seen, hundreds of thousands crowding into the square to see the man that they hope will re-energize the church. And they already have an enormous confidence in Pope Francis that this is the right man for the times. He's funny, he's off the cuff. He's personable, he's approachable. He got out on that Pope mobile amongst the crowd before the Mass this morning, just as he did on Sunday for the Angelus prayer, actually doing a walkabout outside Santa Ana Chapel. So this is a man who wants to be closer to the people and wants a poor church to work for the poor. Uh, he seems to be making that his stamp, that this needs to be a simpler Catholicism. He's urging people to turn away from the politics of the church that have been so much in the headlines lately and really focus on service to the poor. And he actually urged people today to consider protection as it is the feast of St. Joseph today, as in Joseph, Mary, the parents of Jesus. Joseph is the protector of the church and the Pope's homily was all about protection. He had an interesting phrase, Heather. He said, you know, don't be afraid of goodness or weakness. Weakness is a sign of strength. So this is a man who is, seems extremely human, and I've heard a lot of people believe that he will help bring people back to the church and hopefully heal some of the wounds that we know so much about. You used the word earlier, Susan, as part of our live coverage, re-energize. As you uh, spoke to the people who gathered there, uh, did you get the feeling that uh, this is a bit of a new era for them, that I, they feel a coming back to the church? 
It's more than a bit of a new era. This is a new era. We, we have heard and read in the Italian press over the last few days about the end of the Pope King. And there are expectations that he will simplify the Vatican. We're hearing stories that he opened the door, the wax seal to the papal apartments and said, this is too much room for me. This is too big. He is urging this church to come down from its exalted place, if you will. And this is what he wants to bring to the church. He is, is making his mission the poor, and we're seeing that already in the likeness of St. Francis. I feel a sense of relief amongst Catholics that this man was chosen to lead the church at this time, that Pope Benedict gave them an opportunity and the Cardinal seized it to put a different uh, character and style to the Catholic Church. Of course, we should caution, Heather, that we have heard nothing really about church doctrine. The Pope told the media on Saturday not to politicize the church, but see that it is a church not based on intellectual uh, logic, but on faith. But there are politics, many of them around this church, and he has a lot to solve. He's got to deal with the curia, reforming the curia, which is alleged to have deep corruption inside. He's got to deal with women, bringing them into the church or not. The issues of sexuality, the scars from sexual abuse scandals, these are all the things that people are waiting to hear from Pope Francis. In his past, he has been against homosexuality, euthanasia, abortion, contraception. Whether he will stick as firmly to those ideals or not, we don't know, but those will come out in time. Today, though, Catholics are happy they're happy that this man is leading their church. They're curious about what he will say. I think there's a lot of disaffected Catholics that are a little bit more circumspect about whether this man can change the church at all.